Okay, so match four, and this is where we switch over to the second version of the deck. Uh, the version that is uh, an extra two Birds Paradise, has Azusa, it doesn't have Tarmogoyf, it doesn't have Renegade Rallier. Um, so with this hand, we uh, definitely can't keep this. We're on the play, we don't have any green mana. So we got to ship this one. Uh, this one is playable. And Ghost Quarter on top, we're going to keep that. So we want that third land to be able to cast our knight. It's a little awkward that we still can't cast Courser in this hand, but we can play turn two voice and turn two knight, which would be able to, the knight, if it survives, can get us that extra mana to cast the company or the Courser. So definitely keep that. And we're going to not crack our foothills because we want to draw the Ghost Quarter. All right, Thought Seas, that's good. Took our voice, which is interesting. I expected them to take the company. Death Shadow already because of Street Wraith. All right, end step, get that. Now we're going to go ahead and play this knight, hope it survives. And it does not, it's dismembered, and wow, they're getting pretty low on life. Down to five, but that's a lot of power. <laughs> okay, so now a company, what can what can we get? Nothing, just jump blockers, fatal push, all right, we're just dead. So we just got run over pretty hard that game. Um, they they thought ceased our voice, uh, they played a death shadow, they dismembered our knight. They played another Death Shadow and a Gurmag Angler. And then our collected company was just like, all right, produce some chump blockers and be drawing dead, basically. And they're just like, oh, well, I had the Fatal Push too. So you're just dead now. So we just, I guess, died on turn four? <laughs> Yikes. So... That didn't go well. Game two, uh, we have we have three cards on our sideboard that are really good in this matchup. We have a pair of engineered explosives and an Elspeth. So the engineered explosives, just think about how good it is on this board. You just play play it for one and sack it to kill the two death shadows. And then we just have to deal with an angler, which is very manageable. Because we have like knight, we have courser, we have tracker, we have, you know, we have uh, presumably we have voices and you know birds that can trump block for a turn and whatnot. So just being able to deal with these death shadows is a huge deal with that. And then Elspeth, if we can get an Elspeth active, we minus it to basically wrath their whole board and uh, or plus it and just make trump blockers for their whole board. So I mean yeah we don't have the mana for Elspeth because they just had like a perfect draw. Um, but like the EE could help us get out of that perfect draw and then Elspeth can you know can clean up things there. Um, what I cited out for it, uh, you could cut the Mind Sensor, it's not super good. You can cut uh, one of the Excavators, one of the Trackers maybe. You can also cut one of the Birds of Paradise, um, maybe even two birds. Um, the problem is like you want the all the birds to be able to, you know, get to Elspeth mana. Um, and also because Accelerating is a big part of our game plan in this matchup because it is uh, very tempo oriented in that regard. So I wouldn't sideboard out more than like one, two birds at most towards Paradise. Um, definitely want to bring in those three cards. Uh, I think that we can manage without cutting any of the birds, though. So game two. Uh, we did draw an Elspeth, and we have time. We have turn two voice, turn three excavator, uh, which if it lives, it'll get us the fourth mana for the collected company and would also get us the fifth and sixth mana for the Elspeth because we have three fetches. Uh, not that we need three, just one. We can keep recurring the same one fetch each turn. Uh, but basically, um, this hand is keepable even though uh, our opponent has a fast deck, we're doing a lot of things that are useful. And voice will buy us time because it's double trump block. JK, LOL, the Inquisition does. Voice is not it's not working this game. 
Now, a small point, but a point that I'd like to make. Um, so the card we drew for the turn was Temple Garden. They had just inquisitioned us. So if we play the Temple Garden, we give them full information. They know all five, all five cards in our hand. If we play a fetch land instead, then there's one unknown card. So a lot of people, they like to disguise it. And they're like, well, I'm just going to play the Heath instead. Um, because they don't want to give away full information to their opponent. Uh, but my thinking is, well, we only have two Temple Gardens in our deck. So if I'm fetching, I'm fetching a basic. And so if I, if I play the Temple Garden, and at some point I'm going to want to play it untapped, at the minimum at least to play the Elspeth whenever that time comes along, so I'm going to take the two damage when I play it untapped. So concealing that I drew a Temple Garden, is it worth taking two damage? And I feel like the two damage is going to be a lot more relevant than that information. Because if they have Inquisition, they already have a good target and Excavator. So it's not like, oh, well, yeah, I want Inquisition. Maybe they do something really good, you know? And if they have Thought Cease, I have the two best cards in my hand. So, like, th there's, you know, like, they already are going to Thought Cease me before I can cast this Collected Company, and certainly before I can Elspeth. So it's not like, you know, it's going to change their line at all, given that they have no uh, full information. The only thing is they might uh, play around Path to Exile, because it's like, well, maybe they drew a Path to Exile, so maybe I'm, like, not going to run out my, you know, my creature this turn. But like I think they're still gonna run their creature out because we only had one draw step to draw it. And like they whenever you're a thought cease uh, inquisition type deck as your defensive spells, um like you like you you know that they can just top deck. So once you know that the, the case the um the, the way is clear, um you just go for it and then force them to top deck the answer uh as as their only way out. So uh, it, it's correct. I'm pretty confident it's correct to play the Temple Garden there, and a lot of people don't, and I think that's a mistake. So I wanted to mention that. So now they uh, not playing a threat, fortunately, so now we can just play our Excavator. Um, if we didn't have this company in hand, let me mention that. If we didn't have our company in hand, I would not have played the Excavator there, uh, because when you play the Excavator, you want to be able to get the value off of it right away. So you want to play it ideally when you have uh, when you haven't played a land yet. You play the excavator, then you play the foothills from the graveyard. But since my follow-up play was going to be collected company the following turn, um, my thinking was, well, let's just not waste our mana. Let's cast it, and the next turn we can company um, by playing the the foothills from our graveyard. Then that would be our fourth land, and then we have fifth and sixth in our hand for the Elspeth. Uh, as it turns out. They uh, they played Collective Brutality to take um, Instant out of our hand. So they took the Collected Company out of our hand, and then they played Fatal Push because uh, they cracked a fetch to turn on Revolt, and they Fatal Pushed our Excavator. So they actually dealt with our Collected Company and our Excavator. So now we're kind of like, wow, I you know, kind of wish I didn't play that Excavator now. But I still think it was probably right. It might have been wrong to play the Excavator, but... I think it was probably still right to play at that turn because otherwise we'd be accompanying the following turn and then excavating the next turn. But if we company into like, you know, let's say it wasn't a great company and we hit like a, a knight and a noble hierarch or something, the next turn we just play a land, tap the knight um, to get another mana off the knight and tap the noble and cast the Elspeth next turn. So then like we're still not casting the excavator. Um, so I think that, that was a close play. I don't think it was wrong to play it, but uh, that was my thinking. It just worked out where it was like, you know, it would have worked out better if we didn't play it. But that's, I don't know that that means it was wrong. So now we just, we really need this Elspeth to work for us. Uh, we just need them to not draw a Thought Cease. We want to try to, I mean, not that we can do anything about that, but. All right, so we have a Knight. That's, that's a pretty reasonable draw. Threatening to be a 5-5, five, five, so that holds the tasker back. Never mind. Infinite fatal pushes. And don't find thoughtsies, don't find thoughtsies, yes. Okay, don't have stubborn denial, don't have stubborn denial, don't have stubborn denial. Does it resolve? Uh, trying to find it. Don't stubborn. Yes, they didn't. Okay, now here, I think uh, it's so close. Like, they run Culligan's Command. Some versions run one lightning bolt. 
most versions run zero. The only way to burn the opponent or burn an Elspeth is with Culligan's command. You usually run about two copies of Culligan's command. So I think it might have been better to plus Elspeth. Because if you plus Elspeth, then um, we can chump block the Tassiger. However, that uh, it means if they have team or battle rage, then they can trample over Elspeth. Uh, to uh, trample over the token to kill the Elspeth. So uh, a lot of them run one Battle Rage main and one on the sideboard. So my thinking was, well, if they have two Battle Rages and two um, uh, two Culligan's commands, then it's kind of like, well, it's, you know, whichever one they have, like I'd rather minus it if they have the Battle Rage, I'd rather plus it if they have the, the Culligan's command. Um, but then the tiebreaker for me was... They also run one copy of uh, Kozilek's Return in their sideboard. So if they Kozilek's Return to kill all my tokens, uh, they can attack Elspeth with Tassiger. Uh, Elspeth would go to one, though, um, which means I could just plus Elspeth the following turn and start making tokens. Um, so yeah, I basically, I, I thought it was pretty close. Like, if they call against command and deal two damage to us and redirect to Elspeth, and get like Tasker back or you know have us discard our last card then we just get blown out by Culligan's command but otherwise if they have like uh and they weren't doing things you know that they they just been killing our creatures and cycling stuff um so yeah it, it's kind of unclear what they might have in their hand they have a death shadow in the graveyard though and they haven't been trying to get it back with the Culligan's command so my best guess is that they don't have a Culligan's command in hand um, so it was a risk, but we're kind of all in on this Elspeth. We're like, if you have a stubborn denial in hand, we're, we're kind of out of luck, but they had two in their graveyard already from getting milled away. I believe it's two. Maybe they have one. Maybe they just had one already. Um, but anyway, we just had to kind of, we couldn't just play voice and then, well, see, like if, if they thought to see sus, they get the Elspeth. So I was thinking there's more thought ceases than anything so i don't know worked out kind of got lucky there um, so now the opponent this is kind of another interesting thing where they attack elspeth we chump block they're at three we're only threatening two points of attack so if we attack them down to one and they draw like a team or battle rage then they can attack us i guess it's only 10 hmm So a lot of times um, you can get information if the opponent concedes in this spot. Let's say we were at 10 and they concede. Then it's a premature concession. They could have just made a mistake. But I would take that to mean they don't have Battle Rage in their deck. You know? Then like the next level could be, well, they didn't have Battle Rage in, but then they bring it in for game three. So then I'm thinking they don't have Battle Rage, and that's why they conceded. Um, yeah, it, it can be next level. But we had them dead anyway because we had the Mind Sensor. So we're going to end stat Mind Sensor untap, attack them for lethal, make three tokens if they have any way to survive. So that was game two. And we did leave in the mind sensor. So I believe I took out a bird of paradise, an excavator, and a tracker. So now game three, on the draw, we have first turn noble, second turn courser. We have a path for their creature. Uh, usually these decks have one island, one swamp. So the like if we path to exile their creature and we ghost quarter them, then they have no more basics in their deck. Um, so that's why ghost quarter can be extra effective in this matchup. And if they just naturally draw a basic, then you know we path to exile to get their other one out, and then we crack the ghost quarter and we're just strip mining them. And there's the swamp, so they only have a basic island left. Obviously, we don't want to use our ghost quarter yet, because they could just get the island. Now it's a way to take them off red and punish them. So just play the quarter, courser, inquisition us, take our explosives. So we have lots of removal, so the game's going to go long. We're drawing a collected company. Just play another courser, and then gain some life off this ghost quarter. Ghost quarter them off red, so now they have 
no more basics in their deck, presumably unless they have an unorthodox build. We play out some creatures, we draw a company, and there's another company on top of our deck. And now this is an interesting turn. So we have company on top of our deck. If there was anything other than a company on top of our deck, we probably just cast company. Um, but as it turns out, we don't want to get that company off our deck because that's one of our better draws. Uh, but since the opponent has a lot of pressure, um, and I think I actually messed this up. Uh, or did I mess it up? Yeah, so when you have double path to exile and they have a 3-3 three, three death shadow and a 4-5 tasker, I want to kill both. Uh, so what I did here, I targeted the Tassiger with the first path to exile. Because my thinking was, well, that's the one I want to... Um, I, I want to kill both. But I should have been playing around Stubborn Denial. And here's how to do that. You play path to exile on the death shadow first. And then if they Stubborn Denial it, then in response to the Stubborn Denial, you cast path to exile on the Tassiger. Right? So then if that one resolves... Then when the Stummer Denial targeting the path that's targeting the Death Shadow resolves, well, you don't have a four power creature, right? So when this resolves, Ferocious doesn't work and I just have to pay one. So then I just pay one and counter it. So with one path to exile, I've essentially dealt with your Stubborn Denial, or with, with two paths, I dealt with your den Stubborn Denial and both your creatures, okay? But I, I didn't do that and I should have done that. Um, instead, I targeted the Tasker first, and they countered it. And I couldn't like respond by killing the Death Shadow because, like, well, they would still stubborn it now. Then I was like, well, all right, so now I can only kill one. Which one's more important? I guess probably the Death Shadow is more important because it's it can grow out of control, whereas the Tasker is just for a turn. Um, so I was like, all right, well, so I'll just kill that. And they're like, ah, I had the second one anyway. So all right, whatever. Like, there's nothing I could have done anyway in that spot, but I still screwed it up and I wanted to point that out. So they go for the red source now. We draw a company. We cast the company. We hit voice and eternal witness. Witness gets back path to exile. Um, and here, I think that attacking could, in some scenarios, be wrong. Um... So we have the voice out. So if they do something, uh, we're going to get the elemental. And like if they cast Snapcaster Mage, then we get like double elementals. So the attack here, this was probably one of the key turns. Uh, cast and Collecting Company, I feel like is definitely right. Um, but now who we attack with is, is uh, not straightforward. So another line, just to mention it. Um, I could have cast Ghost Quarter on, uh, or just played the Ghost Quarter, uh, sacked the Ghost Quarter targeting the Blood Crypt. That would take the opponent off of anything red. So then we're no longer, for the rest of the game, since they only have a Steam Vents and a Blood Crypt in their 75, and the Blood Crypt is gone and their Steam Vents is gone. So uh, pretty much every list, they only run those two red sources. So they can no longer cast Teamer Battle Rage or Culligan's Command for the rest of the game. Um, so we're just basically taking them off red. But they're down to their last one card. In, their last, they have like no cards in hand, basically. They have one. So my thinking was, I'm pretty far behind on board. I can't afford to be doing that. And I have this, these two, this collected company in hand, these two collected companies in hand, and only three lands on the board and a noble on top of my deck. So unless like one of these coursers survives and I hit a land that I can play off the courser, I can't even cast these collected companies and I'm just dead. So I, I didn't feel like I could afford to take them off red just yet. I had to resolve this company. And now that I resolve the company, um, I get a voice and an eternal witness. And the witness, I think, pretty clearly gets the path back. Uh, I could have gotten the ghost quarter back and made that play, but... Then I'm um, forced to basically collect a company for more gas. Like this voice is just going to chump block and like I'm still going to be basically almost dead next turn. Whereas I'm thinking this path to exile 
on the Death Shadow is kind of the thing, that's my route to victory. I felt like I was in pretty good shape if, if that resolves. So now, back to the attack, I don't want to leave myself dead. Uh, so I need to be able to block the Death Shadow and survive. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, can I not die to Team or Battle Rage? And also, can I kill the opponent the following turn? I'm thinking the elemental token that is created when the voice dies in combat on the next turn, uh, that'll be lethal by itself. Uh, but then we also, we're also just kind of thinking, let's not die to this death shadow. So I attack for two, which is kind of a hedge. And they kill our voice. We get the token. They do have battle rage. So we company, not a very good company. We get an, uh, a voice and a bird, and then we play our noble. We don't attack because, um, well, they could block Death Shadow on Elemental. They can block like a Courser with a Tassiger and take four and go to one. And then we're basically, uh, see. Yeah, then we're dead to Snapcaster on Team or Battle Rage. But as it stands, we're not dead to Snapcaster Mage on Battle Rage. So that was the card we were trying to play around here. Uh, however, on the following turn, we can mount a lethal attack. So we're basically thinking, Okay, the way we lose this game is to Snapcaster on Battle Rage. And this is going to be their first opportunity to be able to do that, so let's not give them that. Instead, they play Kozilex Return. So that was awkward. They killed a bunch of our stuff, we get another elemental. Now, they don't attack, draw land, play it off the top of our deck. So now it's time to Ghost Quarter them off red. So if we had Ghost Quarter them off red before, uh, that play would not have worked. Um, and they also, they, I believe they took our path to exile with Collective Brutality, which is kind of awkward. So the path that we brought back didn't even do its thing. If we had ghost quartered them off red, then we would have won on our turn there. So that was, that was a decision that was probably wrong. Um, getting back the, the path instead of the ghost quarter. But my thinking wasn't they're going to strip this path out of my hand. My thinking was I'm just going to path this death shadow and I'm going to win. So now we're kind of in this precarious position again, where if we attack with all our creatures, they go block the elemental, block the elemental, take four, go to one. And then they would have lethal on the swing back because Death Shadow would be a 12-12 and plus Tasker is 16 and we're at 16. So <laughs> again, kind of an awkward situation where we can, just like we could before, we could get them down to one life, but we couldn't kill them. Well, again, we can get them down to one life and not kill them. So, and we're dead on the swing back this time. So we can't attack. They cast Serum Visions. And let's see what they did. They Serum Vision, top, top. Yeah, so that's awkward. That's not what you want to see at this stage of the game. But uh, it is what it is. Then they play another Death Shadow. That's also awkward. They voice, they snap cast in response, just to get a body on the board. Which, interestingly enough, so since they attacked and we chump blocked, then they cycled Street Wraith, 
to get in the extra damage. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, or no, uh, we didn't block the new one. We took it, we went to eight. That was the thing we did, right? So my thinking is, okay, I have voice. So if they try to do something on my turn, um, I can, like basically you have to do something now. Otherwise I'm getting elementals to block. So they did, they played Snapcaster as their last card. Which again, that was the thing we were trying to play around before, Snapcast Battle Rage, which, you know, just played Snapcaster. Um, so now they play the Snapcaster. Now we don't have lethal again, right? Because they go block, 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 and they're at th three and they take two, so they go to one. So again, kind of awkward. Don't have lethal. Since we don't have lethal and we're down on the swing back, we have to pass again. Well, they attack with their two death shadows. Block, block. So I want all my creatures to be lethal, at least all the ones I can. Get our elemental token. And now here, there's an Azusa on top. So I could have played Azusa, and that's our fifth creature. Um, means we attack with three five five elementals uh, that are all lethal, and that could kill a Tassier. Um my thinking is, well, they're just going to take lethal if their card in hand isn't um, a blocker. If it's a Snapcaster Mage, we kind of get punished. But if it's a Snapcaster Mage, then they could just Snapcast the uh, Fatal Push anyway, and we're in bad shape. So I'm thinking it has to basically be a removal spell to punish us, and this 1-2 this creature isn't really going to help us uh, in this state. We really need to draw a good spell. We need like a Path to Exile, Collected Company, something, you know, even a Knight with Reliquary at this point. There's so many lands in our graveyard uh, that that could be really good. Uh, we draw a Courser instead, or Courser is on top, which doesn't help us. Ghost Quarter them. And then here, I decided to go for it because they have one card in hand. Uh, I'm thinking that they attack with the Death Shadows anyway. Um, but I'm thinking, okay, well, if they have a removal spell, I'm kind of in bad shape anyway, because my board, I'm just getting losing two creatures every turn. So I, I can't really afford to play the waiting game too long, otherwise they just grind me out and I no longer have a window to try to win the game. And since I know I'm drawing Courser next turn, and that's not going to help my board. I'm going to get one creature, and then I'm going to have to lose two creatures to the Death Shadows. So even though like my position isn't um, like isn't isn't great here, I feel like in order for them to make that attack that they made, they probably have the removal spell in hand. My position just keeps getting worse, and so this is the really the last opportunity I have to go for it and force them to have it. And even though I think they probably have it, um, I uh, I felt like I ha this was my last chance to go for it, and they did have it. Uh, but I, but the thing I also did to try to bait them, so I played the Ghost Quarter, or I exact the Ghost Quarter to target their land. If they don't have anything, then they activate Tassiger, because that's their fourth mana for the Tassiger, to get a spell back. And then if they do that, then we attack them, and it's lethal, and they die. So knowing that they're dead on board, and are tapped out with nothing, if they activate Tassiger, their play is to just let that resolve anyway, even if they have nothing, because their only way to win is to like bluff that they have a removal spell. They didn't bite, um, which still, again, doesn't really give me any information. It just gave the opponent a chance to punt the game away, uh, to give me that information, I guess, to make themselves dead on board, which some players do. Maybe it's one out of 100, so you want to give yourself that, that free win in that spot. But I still deemed it was correct to attack with all of them, given that the window is closing and we know that the Courser's on top of our deck. They had it, so now we're kind of getting blown out here. So they basically kill two of our elementals with the Fatal Push. And now we have to just double chump block to stay alive. Now, we're still drawing live here. Uh, interestingly enough, because we can play Courser, and if there's a Horizon Canopy on top of our deck, then we can play the canopy off the top of our library and then draw the card underneath the canopy. 
So if let's say um, the top cards for a library, or um, so we play the Courser here for, for three mana, and we play the Canopy and sack it and draw like a, uh, a Voice of Resurgence or a, uh, a Scavenging Ooze or a Path to Exile, then suddenly our board is like we're, we're back in this and we're, you know, <laughs> Things are gonna, like we're, it's obviously a Maverick situation where you know we have an elemental, they have a pair of ten tens and a four five, but like we we do actually hit. We're not dead yet. Okay, now we're dead. <laughs> now that we know night's coming, we are we are officially drawing dead. Um, so yeah, this is this is an interesting game. Uh, there are a couple things we could have done differently, and anytime you have one of these really interactive long games. Uh, you can kind of think back and it's like, well, what could I have done differently? There's usually several things you could have done differently, and this is no exception. Um, the turn that we've cast the Collected Company and we hit the Witness, we could have witnessed back a Ghost Quarter instead of the Path to Exile. And since we didn't play a land this turn, we could have played it and taken on off red for the rest of the game. I think that was probably the turn that was critical that we should have made that play. Um, and that would have made the difference because then they couldn't have cast the, the Battle Rage or the, the Kozlex Return. Um, so then that would have basically taken away their chance to win. Uh, I think that, that was the, the key mistake we made. I think the other, the other decisions that didn't work out for us that I don't know are necessarily mistakes are the Turn 3 Excavator. Um, that might have been wrong, but I think that's, I think that's really close. Uh, and it probably didn't um, impact the game. Yeah, so that, that, I think the key turn was uh, getting back the Path Exile instead of the Ghost Quarter. I think that was the thing that lost it for us. But this is a really tight game. Like, we, <laughs> we had them down to one life, three separate turns, and it's like, ah, uh, just got to get that one extra point in, you know? But uh, yeah, this is... We ended up losing, but it was really tight. And as you can see, this is a really grindy, close match. And we do have the tools. We have Elspeth, we have Path to Exile, we have Explosives, and we have a lot of ways to uh, just keep things going. So this is a really close, interactive match. Uh, Mirror and Crusader would be a way to help this matchup if you want extra help in this matchup. But we do not have any of those. Good game.